Hello viewers, welcome to this edition of Multimedia Lectures. This lecture is entitled Midline Structures of the Neck and the Muscular Triangle. Now by the term midline structures, we mean the series of structures located in the midline of the leg right from the symphysis mente at the upper end to the upper border of the sternum. All that we are going to do is identify the structures in, in sequence from above downwards. Let's zoom in on this area namely the neck region. Let's blow up that area to get a, a better view of uh, the structures. This is the blow up. We'll begin from identifying one by one the structures. The first structure as already mentioned is the symphysis menti. Immediately beneath it is the raphe of the mylohyoid muscle that is in the floor of the submental triangle. There are two muscles, one on either side, the mylohyoid, they are joined in the midline. This raphe is a midline structure right beneath the, uh, right below the uh, symphysis menti. The mylohyoid muscle ends in the hyoid bone. As a result, the next structure for the discussion is the body of the hyoid bone. Now, the hyoid bone is a very, very uh, important uh, structure in this uh, series of uh, midline structures. When you trace the body of the hyoid bone laterally, we move into the greater horn of the hyoid bone. The tip of the greater horn is a, a rough guide to the origin of uh, the lingual artery um, from the external carotid. As a result, uh, this, this is a very important uh, bony landmark. Next in the discussion is the median thyrohyoid ligament. Median thyrohyoid ligament and extending on either sides of this uh, ligament is the thyrohyoid membrane. This membrane has a peculiar attachment. It is attached from the upper border of the thyroid cartilage to the upper border of the hyoid bone. I repeat, it is the upper border of the hyoid bone. Students commonly make the mistake of mentioning the lower border of the hyoid bone. It is not so. It is attached to the upper border of the hyoid bone. I repeat, the thyrohyoid ligament and the membrane is attached to the upper border of the hyoid bone. The importance of this attachment is um, there is a small uh, um, bursa uh, in the concavity of the hyoid bone and this this space is the region where the thyroid cartilage can get intact during uh, the swallowing uh, phase when the thyroid cartilage is lifted up. Next structure is the laryngeal prominence the thyroid uh, cartilage, the upper border of the uh, thyroid cartilage as it uh, uh, moves towards the midline. That prominence is the laryngeal prominence. Uh, the layman's word, the Adam's apple, the meeting point. Further down is the angle of the thyroid cartilage. That is why these two are shown in continuity with each other. Next, below the thyroid cartilage is the cricothyroid ligament in the midline, cricothyroid membrane on either sides and in front of this the cricothyroid muscle. Further down arch of the cricoid cartilage then the cricotracheal junction it's a small ligament there. Thereafter the first ring of the trachea begins 
then the isthmus of the thyroid gland usually overlies uh, the second to the fourth tracheal rings finally the tracheal rings uh, below that so these are the structures in order from uh, above downwards we can add one or two additional structures to complete the discussion the inferior thyroid veins uh, the jugular venous arch connecting the two anterior jugular veins so these are some of the uh, structures we can add on and that space or lower down there is the suprasternal space to recapitulate this list symphysis menti mylohyoid raphe hyoid bone the median thyrohyoid ligament the thyroid prominence the angle of the thyroid cartilage the um, cricothyroid ligament further down the uh, cricoid cartilage then the cricotracheal junction the first ring of the trachea then overlaying the next three rings the isthmus of the thyroid gland and lower further lower down fifth tracheal ring onwards the next few rings are visible then the inferior thyroid vein the jugular arch these are the structures now subdivisions the hyoid bone can be used as a landmark to divide this region into a suprahyoid region and an infrahyoid region now that's the hyoid bone that's the region above it the suprahyoid area and the region below it the suprahyoid infrahyoid region therefore the hyoid bone is a uh, important uh, uh, landmark Now the suprahyoid region. Let's examine the boundaries and contents. Once again, that's the square, and that's the blow up. You can see that uh, the hyoid bone is one boundary. It's a triangle. The other two boundaries are the anterior bellies of the digastric, and that triangle is the submental triangle. It is the floor of this triangle, which we have mentioned earlier as the mylohyoid muscle. and in mid in the middle the mylohyoid raphe see that's the raphe we will remove the muscle so that only the raphe is left out the only content of this uh, triangle is uh, a few uh, lymph nodes otherwise there is nothing in particular let's look at the infrahyoid region and let's examine the uh, strap muscles the infrahyoid strap muscles now the first muscle is the sternohyoid there are two superficial muscles sternohyoid and uh, omohyoid what you know so is the sternohyoid same sternohyoid on the opposite side is reflected that's the omohyoid muscle on the right side then two deep muscles the thyrohyoid and sterno thyroid i repeat thyrohyoid and sterno thyroid so these are the strap muscles i repeat sterno hyoid and omohyoid that is a superficial and therefore the longer ones followed by two smaller muscles the sterno thyroid and thyrohyoid the cricothyroid muscle is visible in this uh, thing but it is out of context of the current uh, strap muscle discussion now 
nerve supply of these infrahyoid muscles trap muscles branches from the convexity of the ansa cervicalis the root value c2 c3 contributing fibers superior belly of the homohyoid and the thyrohyoid get c1 fibers through the hypoglossal nerve actions of these muscles this in conjunction with the suprahyoid muscles act as a stabilizers of the hyoid bone I repeat in association with suprahyoid muscle it stabilizes the hyoid bone but by its own action all of them cause uh, depression of the hyoid bone contradicting action they are antagonists to the suprahyoid group of uh, muscle in terms of embryology these are comparable to the um, anterior wall muscles of the abdomen namely the uh, rectus muscle of the abdomen they are more or less in the same uh, plane now few other structures of importance the structure shown there is the levator glandulae thyroidea a fibromuscular band running between the hyoid bone and the isthmus of the pyramidal lobe it is a remnant of the thyroglossal duct the thyroid gland develops from its caudal extension importance thyroglossal cysts can occur along the course of this duct i repeat thyroglossal cysts can occur along the course of this duct some of the important applied aspects tracheotomy can be done through this um, midline incision in the lower part of this triangle this is for uh, approach uh, to the trachea to make an opening into the trachea for this the isthmus of the thyroid gland has to be either pushed inferiorly or it has to be cut to reach the trachea the ideal surgical location is uh, second to the third tracheal rings and therefore the isthmus is overlying it as a result uh, this has to be either cut or pushed aside for a tracheotomy um, procedure similarly the f the following are the list of anatomical structures encountered on an infrathyroid approach uh, uh, to the trachea the inferior thyroid vein an occasional thyroid uh, ema artery in the event of a high origin of left brachiocephalic vein there could be a high jugular arch connecting the two anterior jugulars very rarely the pleura especially in the pediatric age group and of course in the in infants the thyroid thymus gland may also be encountered muscular triangle boundaries anterior boundary midline of the neck from the hyoid bone to the jugular notch of the sternum posterior superiorly the superior belly of the homohyoid posterior inferiorly the sternocleidomastoid floor pretracheal fascia covering the infrahyoid muscles roof skin superficial fascia and the investing layer of the fascia which crosses over to the opposite side contents the infrahyoid muscles thyroid gland larynx and trachea little more laterally carotid sheath and its contents as already mentioned in the event of high location the left brachiocephalic vein the brachiocephalic artery and more commonly the jugular venous arch located in the roof of the triangle is the anterior jugular vein the jugular venous arch over is seen in the suprasternal space now this in summary are the boundaries and contents of the muscular triangle